A, a follow-up question again. Forgive me for for being um, uh, for being slow here. But. Hey guys, I'm off the grid for August, but good for Joe Scarborough. Still got the job. The House Freedom Caucus is actually pushing for a short-term government funding bill before an October 1st deadline, and the group is asking GOP leaders to adopt a continuing resolution that would fund the government until early next year. But the group's also demanding the stopgap measure to include a provision that would expand proof of citizenship requirements to vote in federal elections. With us now, NBC News senior national political reporter Sahil Kapoor. Sahil, looks like uh, some, some Republicans are angling uh, for the possibility of a shutdown to get this issue in front of voters. But I've been confused about this this uh, from, from the very start. Um, this, this bill, I'm sorry, but isn't it illegal for illegal immigrants to vote in elections? I'm not exactly sure what point they're trying to, and I'm not, I'm not being facetious, but isn't that a crime if you're not a citizen of the United States and you vote in an election? Yeah, it is already illegal, uh, and it's very rare, Joe. So uh, let me ask you, Sawyer, just a, a follow-up question. Again, forgive me for, for being um, uh, for being slow here, but it's just what I do. If, if it's already against the law for people who aren't American citizens to vote in elections, then why would the Democrats oppose the bill? What, what do they say the harm is in this bill that basically just repeats what the law already is? Yeah, it repeats what the law already is, but it creates some new burdens to go and register to vote. For instance, you need a passport. You might need a birth certificate. A lot of people don't have those documents readily on them, and the idea is it could disenfranchise them. The Democrats argue that this is a solution in search of a problem, that there's no problem here. You already have to attest under uh, severe criminal penalties that you're a citizen in order to register anywhere, and states can set different laws as they please. This would set a nationwide standard, Democrats argue. Um, but Republicans are happy to, to tout this issue if you simply poll, you know, should there be uh, requirements like this proof of citizenship to vote? Uh, many Republicans see that as a winning issue. And they've passed this bill through the House of Representatives already, Joe. The question is, do they want to pick this fight in the context of a government funding uh, standoff? Remember, this is the last train leaving the station before the election. This yeah. is the last deadline Congress has. And if they pick this fight, it could cause a shutdown at a pretty perilous time. Guys, AstraZeneca recently admitted in court that its COVID vaccine could result in life-threatening blood clots. The admission by AstraZeneca is the first of its kind, and it won't be the last after the damage we've seen these vaccines can cause. The question now is, if you got the vaccine, what can you do about it? Well, Dr. Peter McCullough and his team at The Wellness Company have been leading experts in treating vaccine injury and long COVID since early on, and their research has shown that natokinase, alongside bromelain and curcumin, derived from turmeric, has potential in detoxing side effects. To date, tens of thousands of people have followed Dr. McCullough's protocol and taken base spike trio from the wellness company, and the results have been nothing short of miraculous. Purchasing each ingredient in Spike's port formula is pricey, but the wellness company's unique formulation gets you 35% off. Base Spike Detox Trio is the gold standard for combating spike protein, a daily regimen to help you get back to feeling your best. Reclaim your health by going to twc.health slash Ruben and use code Ruben to save 15% and get free shipping. 